You want to go to a good college, and that means you need to take rigorous coursework, which means you need to take AP classes. I'm Jason Patel, the founder of Transition, and we've helped tons of students with college and career guidance. In this video, you're going to learn several important things. What are AP classes? Are certain AP classes more important than others? What to consider before enrolling in an AP class? The benefits and challenges of AP classes? How many AP classes should you take in high school? How many AP classes do top schools, including the Ivy League, look for? Important do's and don'ts of AP classes. And what to do if your school doesn't provide AP classes. By the way, stick around for this entire video because there are some critical nuances I need to tell you about. This isn't as cut and dry as you think. We have a lot of great things to cover, so let's get right into it. Many top universities like to see AP classes on an applicant's transcripts for a variety of reasons. It shows an applicant's commitment to their education and that they are not afraid to take classes that will challenge them to think deeper and master even more skills. But first, what are AP classes? AP stands for Advanced Placement and is a designation given to specific classes that go above and beyond the standard requirements for the subject. The AP program is administered by the College Board, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to connect students to college success. AP classes are available in 38 courses, including the arts, English, history and social science, math and computer science, science, foreign languages, and research seminars. I kid you not, I'm going to list almost every AP course right now. Research, seminar, art history, music theory, studio art, 2D design, studio art, 3D design, studio art, drawing, English language and composition, English literature and composition, comparative government and politics, European history, human geography, macroeconomics, microeconomics, psychology, US government and politics, US history, world history, calculus AB, calculus BC, computer science A, computer science principles, statistics, biology, chemistry, environmental science, physics C, electricity and magnetism, physics C, mechanics, physics 1, algebra-based, physics 2, algebra-based, Chinese language and culture, French language and culture, German language and culture, Italian language and culture, Japanese language and culture, Latin, Spanish language and culture, Spanish literature and culture. Okay, I'm glad that's done and we got it out of the way. AP classes consist of traditional instruction in the classroom, as well as a standardized AP test for each subject at the end of the year. Scores are given from 1 through 5, based on the level of mastery demonstrated on the exam. Five equals extremely well-qualified, four equals well-qualified, three equals qualified. By the way, many colleges recognize passing scores as three, four, or five. Two equals possibly qualified, and one equals no recommendation at all. So, are certain AP classes more important than others? It goes without saying that all AP classes are rigorous and will help prepare high school students for college, but there are certain courses that will provide a broader foundation. Most universities require all incoming freshmen to complete a basic list of core classes. These usually include an English, math, and science requirement. The AP classes that offer core curriculum courses are the most likely to be accepted by colleges to apply as credits needed for graduation. Even if the college does not allow credit, students who have a strong foundation in these core classes will have an easier time adjusting to the rigor of a college class. Colleges also want to see that you have taken AP classes to prepare you for the major that you intend to study. It's okay if you don't have a set idea yet, but if you know that you want to be a doctor and include that passion in your admissions essay, they may wonder why you didn't choose to pursue the AP biology class in high school. If there is a way for you to get a deeper understanding of a subject area that you want to devote your working life to studying, you should try to start that journey as soon as possible. Another thing to consider is your individual preparation for a particular AP class. Some have prerequisite classes that must be completed before a student is allowed to enroll. This is to ensure that the student has the foundational skills needed to be successful in that class. If you do not have the needed prerequisite knowledge and skills, you will have a very hard time keeping up in a particular AP class and may be better off enrolling in one that better utilizes your academic background. In other words, you want to be somewhat prepared to take an AP class. The harder ones, like in the sciences and maths, reflect that you put in the work and are not afraid of a challenge. So, what should you consider before taking an AP class? Consider these questions from the College Board Conversation Starter before enrolling in an AP class. What AP classes are you interested in taking? 
What types of classes or subjects do you enjoy the most? What college majors are you considering? In which subjects do you do well? What careers excite you? It is helpful to talk about these things with a teacher, counselor, or your parents to get their perspective. If you can, talk to current AP students to see what it would be like in their shoes. You will also need to know what classes your school offers. Talking to your counselor is a great way to find out more about the AP program at your specific school. Along with teachers, parents, and fellow students, they can help you map out a challenging high school path that will prepare you for college and the future that you want. Start with the questions below from the College Board Conversation Starter. What AP courses does our school offer? What can I do next to prepare for AP? Have students, like me, taken AP? Will the class be too advanced for me? Are there AP courses offered that I'm likely to do well in? Are there study groups or people who can help me if I need it? Are there other courses that can help me succeed in AP or help me prepare for college and a career? What is the cost of taking the AP exam? Is there help with payment? Does our school weight AP grades in our GPAs? And how do they do that? What information should I share with my parent or guardian? It is also important to know crucial enrollment deadlines for AP classes and any prerequisite requirements that may be needed. College Board governs the actual curriculum and standards, but schools can choose exactly how to implement the program. Some schools may require recommendations from previous teachers or one-on-one -on -one meetings with a counselor before a student is allowed to enroll in an AP class. So, it's important that you do your homework before taking AP classes. You don't want to fly blind. Now, Let's say you take an AP class. What are the benefits? In a look at a comprehensive study on the benefits of taking AP classes, Stanford lecturer and researcher Denise Pope explained how AP classes can be used to help students succeed. One of the main benefits she saw echoes those celebrated by the College Board. In an AP class, students are surrounded by fellow, highly motivated learners and benefit from the collective enthusiasm and high work ethic in the classroom. Trust me, this is really true. Tyler Valentine, a former AP student and college student at the University of Washington, called the benefits of taking AP classes immeasurable. He said that getting his passing test scores was a real achievement in high school. And I quote, once you get to college, you realize you got all these free credits and you can move on to more advanced classes really quickly. And it really just feels great, end quote. Other students credit their AP experience with inspiring them to pursue certain majors and career fields opening up time to pursue more advanced courses and research opportunities in college. And start with major courses from the first year of college. I did this personally and it felt great. Overall, if you like challenging yourself, consider taking an AP class. But we all know it can't be sunshine and rainbows. So, what are the challenges of taking AP classes? Before enrolling in an AP course, make sure that you are ready for the rigorous classwork ahead. So have a strong foundation in the subject. This means working hard and applying yourself in the classes that will provide the fundamental skills in the arts, English, math, science, and other areas that you will need in your AP class. Have a study plan. AP classes are more challenging and often come with increased responsibilities. Coming up with a plan to make sure that everything gets done, such as designating certain times each day to study, will help you keep on top of your work. Ask for help. One of the main benefits of learning in an AP classroom is the great support network of your teachers and fellow students. If you're having trouble with the concept, ask for assistance. Prepare for the test. What you study throughout the year will be critical to mastering the AP exam, but basic test-taking strategies are also important. This includes understanding the structure of the test, being familiar with the types of questions you will see, and getting enough rest before the test. You can't just wing an AP class. Since there is a standardized and specific curriculum, you'll need to do your homework to pass the exam. Now that we've discussed all these important ideas, let's get to the brass tacks. How should you determine which AP classes to take? First and foremost, you must satisfy the graduation requirements for your school. Enrolling in a lot of challenging AP courses is as impressive, but if you don't include space for the required classes for graduation, you just plain can't graduate. Once you make sure that your plan includes all required courses, you can look at increasing the rigor in your matrix by including AP classes. Start with the core classes that can take the place of other requirements. For example, if you are required to take an English class, see if an English course is required through the AP program. The same can be true of advanced science, math, and history and social science classes. This is a great way to hit two birds with one stone. 
Many competitive applicants at top universities take anywhere from 7 to 10 AP classes throughout high school. So keep that in mind as you're choosing classes. In fact, some universities even require students to take multiple AP classes in order for any of them to count as college credit. To best prepare yourself for college, you should always try to challenge yourself. AP classes can be a great way to do that. Because most of the AP classes cover advanced topics, this often means taking multiple AP courses at once in the last one or two years of high school after the prerequisite classes are complete. This can be a lot for any student to handle, and you should make sure that you are ready for the increased workload. Honestly assess where you are with the foundation level skills and study habits before enrolling in an AP class. You may find that a less rigorous class that focuses on the foundation will allow you to better showcase your abilities. Before you enroll in every AP class available, consider how much time you have to spend studying and completing coursework. In general, AP classes require more time than standard classes. Taking multiple AP classes at once may mean that you give up time to pursue sports activities, extracurricular activities, hobbies, and social time. Top universities want to see applicants who demonstrate leadership potential, as well as a strong academic background. You may need to prioritize your time, which may mean taking fewer AP classes by participating in other extracurricular activities. It is important to talk to your counselor about your plan for high school. This includes your goals for college, where you would like to apply, and the application package that you want to present to admissions board. AP classes are an important part of the story, especially at top universities. Speaking of which, how many AP classes do top schools, especially Ivy League colleges, want to see? While there is no hard number, these schools want to see that you fully challenge yourself. That's the key phrase, fully challenged. Since these schools want top students, one way they determine whether you're a top student is by looking at your course load and seeing all the classes you took. More challenging classes, like AP courses, imply you're someone who is aiming high. That's the type of student a top college wants on their campus. This is true for the top 75 schools in the country, not just Ivy League schools. In plain English, I highly recommend taking as many AP classes as possible. If you're competing with applicants at the top of their respective classes, you'll need to step up your game. More so, take AP classes that are related to your hopeful college major. If you want to study in the STEM fields, then take AP Bio, Chem, Calc, and Physics. If you want to study in the liberal arts, definitely take an AP History or AP Economics. It goes without saying that you don't need to go to an Ivy League college or a top school to be successful. In fact, you should never judge your self-worth on the prestige of your degree. Success and self-esteem all begin in the mind and in the heart. If a top college isn't for you, that's totally cool. You don't need to overload on AP classes then. You do you, but discuss with a parent, teacher, or advisor first. Side note, there is one thing you need to know, and it's really important. If you grew up in a multicultural household, make sure the AP foreign language course, think AP Spanish or French, isn't the only AP you take. Why? An admissions officer can probably tell that you took the course just because you already know the language. Even if the admissions officer can't tell, it's not authentic and sincere to take a course you already know the subject matter to. Try to challenge yourself. It's a great rule for life. On that note, let's do a quick fire round of do's and don'ts for AP classes. Do your research and determine which AP classes are right for you. Do take the required prerequisites. Do keep up with the challenging coursework. Do develop a support system that involves parents, teachers, and classmates to help you succeed. Do take the test seriously. It can help you get free college credit. Do rest eat well, and manage your time wisely. But don't enroll in AP classes that you are not interested in. Don't enroll in AP classes that you do not have a strong foundation in. Don't put off your AP coursework until the last minute. Don't feel that you have to do it on your own. Don't stay up all night to cram for the AP test. Don't stress yourself out by taking too many AP classes at once. Finally, what should you do if your school doesn't offer AP classes? A big part of Transition's mission is to help rural areas and underserved communities, so this part might be relevant if you come from one of those locations. Yes, you can still take AP courses if your school doesn't offer them. It'll require your own research and footwork, but it'll be worth it, I promise. These skills will also help you later in life. You may be able to take online AP courses during a self-directed study. You will still be required to take the AP exam at the end of the year to receive college credits. You can use a workbook, or online resource to help you prepare for this test. You might not even need to take the class in order to sit for the exam and earn college credit. Part of the reason why I love AP courses, by the way. It's also a great option for those who participate in homeschool. 
Of course, it is important for the leadership at your school to know how many students may want to take AP classes. Tell them you want to take AP classes and tell them about your classmates who want to take AP classes. That's how things get done in America. Tell your leaders about what you need and be sure to communicate at all times. If enough students express interest, they might just change the offerings to add the AP program to the school. You can help yourself and generations of students that come after you. Making a difference in your alma mater is one of the great joys of life. And that, my friends, is the end of this video. I hope I've helped. We have a lot more videos incoming, so stay tuned. If you like what you saw, please press subscribe. And look below this video. You'll see links to helpful guides on how to succeed in high school. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. Now it's your turn. In the comments, tell me about your favorite high school classes and why you love them. If you have any questions on how to apply to college, leave it in the comments. I'll respond to those as well. Best of luck, everybody. I'll see you soon.